Okay, this video is gonna be just a tad, dif tad different because I only caught the beginning of when I got there. So when I got there, I started recording, started inspecting the vehicle, which I walk you through in this video. And then the next time I record is when I'm actually done with both vehicles. So seven hours later, just because it was so hot outside. Like it was, we were just in a dead beat sun the entire time. Two, it was a lot of work to get done. And then three, we're on a time constraint. So I didn't want to keep on pausing. Like we were working really, really fast, really, really hard. And I don't want to keep on stopping to record. So um, I only caught just the beginning and the end. So I'm gonna play the actual intro part of like what I actually caught when I was there. And then I'm gonna keep on jumping back and forth and just walk you through what I did to get the results that I did. Again, this is gonna be a little bit out of the ordinary video in terms of me not actually showing you what I did as I was cleaning, just because I didn't I didn't have the camera rolling on this one. And I'll be giving you some some information as I go along on the business side of things as well, just to, just to kind of inform you guys more on what I did and how I did it. And if you're interested in starting your own detailing business, if you wanna know what services you can offer to potential customers, uh, check in the description box down below for this guide to help you get started with what type of services you should offer to your customers. So let me go ahead and show you the intro. And we're back for another video here. I'm at this uh, shop called Brave Motorsports. They do a lot of hill climber type vehicles. So this is one of their uh, Jeeps, I believe, or is it FJ40? It is a Shabam. Um, so yeah, it's gonna go to a show next tomorrow actually. So the owner actually called me out last second saying, hey, can you guys, can you come out to clean these two vehicles? They're going to a, to an event, not a show, but an event tomorrow. Can you come out and clean them? So typically, I'd actually say no if they're like rude to me. Like if they if they think they're gonna boss me around because, and you'll get this a lot, where like people will call you up less than be like, hey, I need you to come out tomorrow. I'm going through this and this. I'll pay you cash, I'll pay you more, whatever, whatever. I'll typically say no to those people because they're like, they think they can boss me around just because they have money or whatever. But this guy, uh, Dave, super friendly guy, he said, if you can make it, that's great. If you can't, understand it's last minute. So I moved some customers around to make it to this detail because I've, I've worked with them in the past, really cool guys. I really like, their cars are cool. So here just to touch these up. Again, these are hill climbers. They see the dirt the entire time. So we're just gonna clean them up a little bit. Again, this is last minute. If, it was, if I had more time, more, I'd be able to do a, a more comp comprehensive work, but it's literally going out tomorrow at noon and there's two of these cars. So it's quite a bit of work. It's just the interior, exterior. Again, these things get beat up so bad. So we're not, you know, we're not looking to be super, you know, it's not going to a concourse show or anything. And then here's my little cousin helping me out today. So this is what we're using for uh, pressure. It's, just, it's, an, it's an electrical, pressure washer type deal it gets siphoned through a bucket of water so I'm um, more the better doesn't last all that long so you will have to uh, keep on charging it but for what it is this is great they do have a water hose and a pressure washer for me but it is rather long and I think I can get away with this for now if I can't I'll go talk to Dave I'm like hey Dave can we switch it up can, we, can I get the water hose and then we'll switch it up but for now this is what I'm working on as far as the paint I'm just gonna spray APC on it and then rinse it down and that'll take out most of the grime. I'm gonna do the wash and wash and clay and wax on here. And by wax, I mean spray wax. Uh, and then just cleaning all this stuff out and then work on the interior while my little cousin is working on the tires. And then we're both gonna tack the, the suspension later. Um, I'm gonna be talking really fast, I'm gonna be moving. So get ready for just me ma not making a lot of sense, repeating myself and overall just working. So initially when we started off, I brought that worked electrical um, electrical pressure washer as you saw. Now, I, I, it's not the most part, it's, okay, it's definitely not the most powerful thing in the world. It is just there for convenience. That way you only have a, you only have to have a bucket full of water and be able to use that to, to pressure rinse whatever you need to pressure rinse. Now, it's not gonna be like a typical electrical or, or even gas, you know, nowhere near close to a, to a gas, a gas um, pressure washer because I mean, it's electrical, so you got a little battery pack on it. So like for me, I would get it just because like if you're offsite, if you're mobile and you're just trying to like rinse off the wheels or rinse off the, the bottom panels of a vehicle that's like caked on with dirt, perfect solution for that. If you're trying to like do like a complete foam down and like a complete rinse and then foam, that's definitely not gonna be in your favor. But if you're just using it for like, like something like in this video or if you're gonna use it just to rinse on the wheels, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, as we were cleaning though, it just, we realized that it wasn't a necessity to use this little electrical pressure washer because it was being, you could easily rinse off all, like literally like 80% of the dirt was rinsed off, not even using 
an all-purpose cleaner. It was simply just spraying with a garden hose, knocked off most of that dirt. Um, uh, so that's what we just, we moved the cars closer to the shop. As I said, we were kind of far from the shop. We moved them a lot closer, both vehicles closer. And we literally just hosed down the entire exterior and most of the dirt got off. We still have to uh, agitate everything down with towels and brushes, but most of the dirt came off just by simply rinsing it with the, uh, with the hose gun. Once we rinsed it down, we had a bunch of towels, a bunch of brushes, and we literally just sprayed down like either the fender, the undercarriage, like certain section, and we just worked the, um, we just worked the areas with our brushes and towels. So again, it was literally just, you have your APC, this is super clean, the little 10 to one, we were spraying down certain areas. Then we use our different brushes and towels to get, just to wipe everything down and then hose it down with the garden hose. Now, one thing that came in handy, which you could use knee pads, cause we were lit pr pretty much on, on rocks the entire time, on gravel. So uh, one thing I did, we, just, we have these bucket lids here um, that for like the five gallon wash buckets to, to cover them while you're, while you're driving. We actually use these and put them on the ground to protect our knees because we have to get under the carriage behind the wheels and everything. So we were in kind of uncomfortable position most of the time, especially with it being rocks and stuff. So we use this just as our, as our semi kind of worked, uh, which actually it did work like com compared to putting your knees on rocks as compared to this, it actually did help. So I mean, we just use this real quick as a little hack to, to cover our knees so we can move around underneath the carriage. Um, so that's how we did the, the, under, the underside and just basically the entire dirty parts, which is what everything was, we just rinse it down and then use these tools that, to get like 80% of everything down. I mean, it's gonna be mostly a detailed cleaning more than anything. I mean, you're just looking in different directions, looking sideways, up, down, beneath, you're reaching your hands, the brushes. So it's, it's very just detailed grunt work that you're doing on the vehicle. Like there's not much, it's not, the, the actual work itself isn't difficult, it's just like, are you out there in the heat? Can you be there that long? Can you be can you be there? Can you be out there that long? And can you just keep an eye focused uh, and and get the job done? Now remember, you need to set the expectations in terms of what the customer needs and then what you're gonna deliver. I mentioned this isn't gonna be a concourse detail. It's not gonna go to Pebble Beach. It's not. It's none of that. They're just gonna go to an event because one, I think their their tire uh, sponsor or something was gonna be there, so they're just kind of representing a little bit. Um, not entirely sure, but anyway, you need to understand what's at play there, right? If they say, hey, look, we want to enter this into a car show, we want to get first place, whatever, whatever, that's a different ball game as opposed to someone saying, hey, look, I just want to get it cleaned up. It hasn't been cleaned up in over, you know, 16 months. Can you just touch it up a little bit so it looks better? That, that's two completely different types of mindsets you're going to go after in terms of the, the, deliverably, the delivery of your results. So in this case, he called me up saying, hey, look, I know it's super last second. If you can make it out by tomorrow because it needs to go out the next day. I'd be very happy with that. If not, that's cool too. We'll just give it a quick, we'll quick a quick wipe down. So we were, I already understood, like I had a very clear understanding of what they were looking for. Um, so with the interior, again, they're hill climbers. I mean, they are like in the, it's a terrible, you know, conditioned car because it's just out there in the, in the, in the dirty environment. So I wasn't going there to, to, you know, get 80% of the dirt out. I just was just trying there to make it you know, given the limitations we had, I was just trying to make it look a lot better. And we accomplished that. Not all the dirt came out. We scrubbed down all the flooring. We scrubbed down most of the interior, but not everything is gonna come out just due to the fact of the condition that it's in. So between various brushes, uh, the uh, Metro Sidekick, Oops. towels and uh, brushes, we just scrubbed it as best as we could, getting in different angles, uh, getting from pushing the seats forward, pushing the seats back, uh, getting inside the vehicle and just literally agitating blowing out and then spraying the APC, again, super clean, the Luda 10 to 1, and then wiping it down. Uh, as far as the cloth seat, same thing. We just use our APC, scrub them down a little bit, and wiped it down with a towel. So basically, everything was all-purpose cleaner and wiped down between different brushes and towels. Now, on the front end, it was caked on with bugs on the, on the actual windshield, on the hood, a little bit top, on the top portion of the, uh, of the roof. So again, super simple, use a bug sponge and operator's cleaner. Because it was like terribly, terribly hot outside, we didn't let anything dry on the vehicle. So everything was always kept, was always kept um, wet. That way nothing would dry on the panels, especially uh, referring to like chemicals. So when I'd spray APC, I wouldn't spray down the entire front grill. I would work like a small section, spray down, agitate, inspect results, spray it out again, agitate, rinse it down, and then wipe it down and I'd work section by section just because it was so hot outside, um, that just any given length of time would, would heat up, would uh, dry up the, the chemical on the surface because the, the outside it was hot and then the panels themselves were hotter. So uh, very, you have to be very cognizant of like, don't let anything dry 
on the on the paint. Now, as far as the mirrors, they were actually very, very caked on. Not on the FJ Cruiser, but on the uh, RAV4, they were very, very caked on. Um, so uh, what I use on the, uh, I forget what it's called, the uh, blink mirror, no. I'll try to link it up. But anyways, so on the mirrors that were really caked on with dirt, I mean like really, really, really caked on with dirt, uh, we did, well, I just used, again, all-purpose cleaner just to get like the initial grunts of the, of the, uh, of the mirror. And then uh, uh, changed towels, used APC again just to get whatever remaining filth was on there. And then once I knew it was a clean but like smeary mirror, then I just used regular a towel with O&R to wipe it down, to wipe down the mirror. Uh, because they were, I mean, it was like caked on, like you could take a nail and just etch at it away and you could see like the, the crumbs coming off. So it, it was heavily, heavily etched on the mirror. And that really was the bulk of the work. I mean, we gave it a quick wash. Uh, you know, we removed the bugs, washed down the interior, the, the, the exterior, um, sprayed spray wax on it, uh, cleaned up the door jams, gave the, vac gave the interior, both of them, thorough vacuums. On the other vehicle, there was a bit of pet hair on the passenger side. We cleaned that up very quickly, wiped down all the surface material with just o &R, uh, and a towel on the inside panels. Um, so everything was relatively straightforward. The biggest problem or the biggest obstacle we had to overcome by far, without a doubt, was just the plain heat. Um, I mean, I think it was pushing like 102 that day. And that's not, I mean, that's not, on top of that, add the humidity to it. Uh, that, that's like no joke whatsoever. Um, so, you know, me having someone to help me with it, we knocked it out in seven hours. If it was by myself, that'd be like four times worse uh, just because given the, the environmental circumstances. Um, so, it, but it was a rather straightforward detail. Now, you know, Going into another detail like this again, like give me the exact same scenario, uh, I could probably finish it within five hours. Um, now given like I took that experience and now I know exactly how to go with it. Probably within like five and a half hours with two people instead of seven hours. Um, could definitely finish that a lot better and a lot more efficient. So as a recap, it was in total seven hours. I do believe it was seven hours or like seven-ish hours. Um, I charged each vehicle 200 bucks, which it should have been 250 given the work, but uh, it was just 200 bucks each, so it was 400 in total. Uh, I should have charged 500, which is 250 each. And uh, I think the customer charged like, I gave us a tip of like 60 or 80 bucks. This was like two months, two months ago, I think now, so I'm not entirely sure, but he also did tip on top of that. And, um, but other than that, I mean, again, this is an out of the ordinary video, just because I only caught the before, I only caught the after, so after, I just wanted to walk you through the process because I think there, there was a big learning curve in terms of like, doing that type of grunt work um, for you guys to learn. So uh, it wasn't as glorious because again, I didn't catch all those glamour shots or anything, but it is what it is. So let me know as many questions, comments, feedback as, as you have below in terms of like what I did with any specific part of the vehicle. Uh, that way I'm more than happy to help you guys out. Um, we didn't do the engine at all. So it was just the, uh, it was just the exterior, like just a thorough cleaning of the exterior, getting all that dirt down, uh, dress the tires, vacuumed the interior, wiped down the dust, because there was a lot of dust, but again, it, it was just a wipe down for the most part of all interior panels. It wasn't like thorough, thorough agitation or anything like that, because it just simply wasn't needed. Um, so it was just that, wiping down the door jams, um, with mirrors, glass, uh, relatively straightforward. Again, it was just like the, the thoroughness that you had to go through with the exterior. That was a big deal, but most of it came off with the uh, with with, a, with rinsing it with a hose. Yeah, if you had a pressure washer, it mostly you know that's that's like 80, 90 percent of it would have came off. But you'd still want to agitate, like you'd still have to agitate with uh, APC brush and towels, just because you want to you don't want any, any of those smears, smudges to be on there. So even though you, you could pressure on pressure rinse most of it off, uh, you'd still follow up with a lot of brushing and cleaning because there's a lot of intricate areas that you just have to get through, get to with, with, you know, with your hands and brushes and towels. So again, leave any comments, questions down below. I'll let you watch the rest of the video of the after and that will be it. I'll see you on the next one. We're done. What? We're done. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah. Yeah.